Welcome back, Canonites, to a rather exciting issue of Cannon Fodder, a standalone issue at that. Yesterday, we got a look at what to expect with the next Halo 5 update, along with a glimpse of stuff to come in 2017. Today, Grim gifts us with some canon details on a few of the items coming in the update. So, let's take a look. We open with a look at the new Icarus Mjolnir armor. The latest in a series of cutting-edge Mjolnir suits created for Spartan aerospace pilots, Icarus Carasses are laced with inertial compensation webbing so operators can survive the crushing combat acceleration of modern strike craft. Rare Icarus helmets are designed around the practical needs and tactical challenges of dynamic, high-threat combat actuation within cluttered and complex aerospace kill boxes. If the design and description wasn't obvious enough, Icarus is basically the Gen 2 pilot armor. Interestingly, the helmet looks a lot like the helmet used by the Pelican pilot in Spartan Ops. We know Mjolnir advancements have made their way into standard infantry gear before, ODST and the military police armors being examples. So, I wonder if we're seeing another instance of that given the similar designs. Or perhaps we're seeing the opposite in effect, a standard infantry helmet informing the design of a Mjolnir armor set. Or they could just have a similar aesthetic, who knows. Up next is the Anti-Air Wraith, I'm guessing a Type 58, making its first multiplayer debut and its first intended gameplay debut. While you could drive the vehicle in Halo 3, that was an exploit, not intentional. The Skyhunters of the Swords of Sung Helios and Covenant unleash a fusillade of flak bolts to clear the battlefield of enemy aircraft. Sporting a far more Sung derived design, this anti-air wraith variant features heavy armor, fuel rod flak cannons, and a shielded plasma repeater turret. On some units, members of the Swords of Sung Helios have incorporated a verdant iridescent sheen into the coloration, a pugnant homage commissioned by the Arbiter to honor the Sung Heli Separatists that fought alongside human forces at the close of the Covenant War. I absolutely love that bit about the added sheen. If you hadn't guessed, the homage in this case is the green sheen, referencing the green used primarily in Separatist Phantoms as seen in Halo 3. Fun fact too, this is the first time that Sung Heli Separatists have officially been referred to as such. Following that, we get into two new Wasp variants, the first being the Oni Wasp. The size and mobility of the AV-49 Wasp makes it a favorite of Oni security teams in high-threat environments. Oni Wasps are outfitted with heavy armor and upgraded weapons, such as the all-environment homing missiles and HEDP machine gun rounds. As the dark livery of these particular AV-49 attack VTOLs implies, Oni Wasps are very often employed during stealth surveillance operations and night strike sorties. The hushed and rumor-laden nature of this reality has earned both the craft themselves and their respective pilots the nickname, Dusk Devils. I love the Dusk Devil nickname, but more than that, I love the stealth reference to the color of the Oni Wasp. All Oni vehicles in Halo 5 have a black shade to them which can certainly infer stealth technology, but it's nice to have confirmation, for the Wasp if nothing else. Next up is the Hannibal Wasp. Miseria Armory and Hannibal Weapon Systems collaborate on initiatives to evolve their existing offerings of weapon systems and vehicles. Perhaps nowhere is this more evident than inside the Hannibal Wasp. This highly advanced Wasp sports upgraded heavy armor, Gauss repeaters, and experimental ion field bomb launchers. I got to try this guy during my visit to 343 back in September and boy was it fun. Next up is the M319 Grenade Launcher. The M319 is a single-shot, break-action grenade launcher that can fire a variety of 40mm rounds. Hold the trigger for alternate fuse, release trigger to manually detonate with EMP effect, making it extremely effective against enemy vehicles. Additionally, grenades can be bounced to reach around cover. Not much to say, I'm just glad to see it back. And yes, it should have been part of the Memories of Reach update. Anyway, after that we get a variant of the grenade launcher, this one dubbed the Pro Pipe. Professional problem solvers demand proximity fusing and dynamic ballistics. The lovingly dubbed Pro Pipe is an improved grenade launcher with rounds that adjust trajectory after ricochet in order to maximize lethality. EMP alt fire mode is retained within this variant. And after that we have the Safeguard Sentinel Beam. The sterilization beams of Safeguard Sentinels are highly effective at containing and cauterizing intrusions into their assigned protectorate. Beam projectors stolen from these Forerunner constructs are still extremely effective, but do suffer from overheating and a limited internal power supply. Another weapon I had the pleasure of using during my visit to 343. It functions just like the classic Sentinel Beam, except it has a more 343-era Forerunner design with floating parts, smart scope, and it disintegrates enemies. Given this, I'm glad 343 decided to differentiate it from the Sentinel Beam we know, but it does make me wonder, what is a Safeguard Sentinel? The Sentinels we see in the Bungie trilogy and occasionally in Halo 4 are Aggressor Sentinels, so this must be a different Sentinel type. 
Could Safeguard be the in-universe designation for a Super Sentinel? Or maybe the Onyx Sentinel? I personally doubt that given their description in Ghosts of Onyx, but let's not rule them out completely. The Onyx Sentinel beams were powerful enough to vaporize organic targets like this one, and they shared the floating geometry of the newer Forerunner designs. Whatever the case, I hope we can identify these Safeguard Sentinels soon. Maybe they'll be in Halo Wars 2. Last on the list is the Morph Site, which is basically a Forerunner site. For years, Oni Xeno Material Exploitation Group has labored to unlock the secrets of the Forerunner's dynamic threat acquisition and engagement systems. Their efforts led to translation protocols that allowed Forerunner weapons to be used with UNSC Spart links and HUDs, with limited functionality. However, only recently has collaboration with Swords of Sankhelios Artisan Armorers and deeper insight into Covenant dummy plugs allowed for partial replication of cryptic Forerunner sub-mechanisms and interface signals. An advanced technical configuration used by the UEG's Elite Bodyguard Corps, the Morph site has also been recently developed in test configuration and issued to Spartans assigned to Infinity's science field teams. The Morph site has demonstrated enhanced acquisition speed against targets exhibiting flood signatures, though work continues on analyzing resonance exhibited by the Morph site when integrated with certain weapons. This is certainly interesting, explaining not only the history of this particular scope on UNSC weaponry, but also how Mjolnir was able to easily interface with Forerunner weapons in Halo 5, perhaps even in Halo 4. It's not something that ever really bothered me, I always figured it worked just because Reclaimer, but a real explanation is cool too. I'm also curious about this UEG Elite Bodyguard Corps. Is that like the 26th century Secret Service or something more? And shit, did that just say Flood Signatures? I know that in-game this is probably just a reference to the Infection game type, but I can't help but wonder, could that be a hint at the Flood's return? Or simply to minor containment efforts at Forerunner installations? We'll have to wait and see. Moving forward, we get a brief look at the Voice of War Rec Pack, a 10 USD Rec Pack that includes new announcer voices for Arena and Warzone. Our three announcer voices are Yabdad the Merciless, The Warzone simulation is being simulated! On! Grunting believable from inside your grave. The warden internal is killing your teammates, and it is hilarious. Spartan Edward Buck. That's a victory. Check your guns and find your chairs. We're going home winners. Perfect defense. You got skill, Spartan. Other guys, not so much. Get mean, Spartan. This is assault. There's space on my squad for you anytime and 031 Exuberant Witness. Initiating Slayer. I am eager to see how well you perform. Should you not employ the scope? You are an excellent diversion. And given the inclusion in cannon fodder, it would seem to indicate that these are entirely canon, which is both kind of cool and kind of ridiculous. Buck is the exception though, since he was a Spartan commander once upon a time. Anyway, we move forward again, this time to the new Forge canvases. First is Barons for all the Sangheili lovers. All communications in this area are drowned out in an incessant babble of electronic noise and madness. And followed by Depths. Beneath the surface of a thousand seas, life rebuilds, reloads. Can you keep your cool under extreme pressure? And we wrap up with a look at the new Beam Weaver Goblin. I'll let Senior Science Commissioner Gaplap fill you all in. Hello there, here is a report. Everyone knows the Goblin is the best vehicle at being great ever invented. It's only got one real big problem, and that is sometimes it doesn't kill nearly enough humans enough. So me and a bunch of other top Balaho sciencers did all kinds of new planning and methods and made some important ideas. We did a new kind of Goblin named Bean Goblin. It makes Old Goblin look like stinky garbage that got thrown away for being terrible. It is the new best at killing, and I will explain to you how come. One idea is that there wasn't enough exploding, so we decided to add more exploding in this one. Like the old poem goes, Needlers are really great for fighting humans, but sometimes good to explode them. Oh, and if you ask what the worst thing to get shot by, I know answer right away, a scarab beam. So we put one in front. So in conclusion, this is a great new thing to stop around with and kill humans at. The end. May each step of the great journey be bouncy. This thing is going to be a nightmare in Warzone, no matter what the mode. The article comes to a close with a look at the design decisions behind this updated goblin courtesy of Chris Proctor, and finally a look at the Halo 6 script seen in 343's Mannequin Challenge that closed out the 15th anniversary livestream. It seems Halo 6 is going to be rather... steamy. 
These and everything else can be found in the full Canon Florida article, which is of course linked in the description below. Footage of the currently unreleased Rex was captured thanks to a Forge map created by GameCheat13. A link to the video about how to get this is in the description box and on screen, but given that all this comes out tomorrow, it may be a wasted plug. Still, go show the guy some love. Before we end today, I wanted to briefly look at what we can expect in 2017. Nine helmets were shown alongside the Monitor's Bounty Preview, many of them classics from Halo Reach. We have the Mark V Delta, which is actually the Halo 3 version of Mark V, the Military Police Helmet, Gen 1 Recon, Reach variant, Gen 1 EVA, Reach again, Gen 1 Security, also Reach, the Operator Helmet, Gen 1 EOD, Reach variant, which strangely lacks a Gen 1 tag despite there being a Gen 2 version, CQB, which could be either Halo 3 or Halo Reach, it's hard to tell since they're virtually identical, and finally the Pilot Helmet. Maybe for Halloween 2017 we'll get the Haunted version. So yeah, this update is pretty damn awesome and there's still stuff to look forward to next year. Cannon Fodder and the Monitor's Bounty Preview article are both linked in the description below. Check them out and get hyped. I'm still working on the review of Halo Smoke and Shadow, but it should still be out this week. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.